Ambitious ideas are at the core of all man-made things. We conquered space and the depths of the Earth with the power of our minds. And now we are witnessing another technological breakthrough. Bold scientific ideas today will serve humanity tomorrow. Global Energy has supported constructive dialogue with internationally acclaimed investors for over 20 years. Those of you who have been present yesterday at the announcements we were delivering at the Bolshoi Theatre are aware of those numbers already, but I will repeat them. The Global Energy Association has set a record in 20 years of its existence. We received application from 48 countries. That is a two times gross compared to the period of what we've had a year ago. Those are truly impressive outcomes. We have received applications from the countries that Russia is not going through the best political moments through, be that United States or Japan. We have received a lot of applications from the Middle East, Africa, Asia, Latin America. And for the first time in the history of our award, we're going to have two winners from the People's Republic of China. But I'm not willing to rush the events. I'd rather give the floor to the person who is instructed by the president to give out this award. This is Deputy Prime Minister responsible for the energy matters. That is Alexander Novak. Your Excellency, please come up with stage. Good morning, dear colleagues, dear friends. It is my pleasure to welcome you at the annual ceremony of the Global Energy Prize. This is a renowned international award that is uh, taking place for the 20th time. And in two decades, we can rightfully state that our world and the energy sector in particular have acquired a new image and we recognize new trend. We live in a situation of an energy transition when the structure of the world energy mix is changing. Today, the hydrocarbon energy sources still account for about 85% of the world energy mix. And despite the fact that in the nearest decades, the traditional energy sources will continue to dominate, their share will be gradually decreasing. We see that developed countries are willing to stick to the climate agenda and the demand for affordable, clean energy is steadily growing. Last year, out of the total amount of the commission generating capacities in the world, around 80% accounted for the solar and wind energy. Decarbonization of the energy sector means extended use of alternative energy sources, reduction of the cost of production and increased energy efficiency, which means that today there is high demand for breakthrough scientific development that will allow us to increase the technological potential of the world energy sector. I'd like to emphasize that the Russian Federation is, being, is continuously supportive of the international scientific dialogue based on the principles of mutual respect and, of equals, and growing of scientific potential would give a positive impetus to development of modern technologies which will lay a solid foundation for the energy of the future. One of the bridges between the science and society, business and the state, is the global energy prize uh, that is world renowned it is becoming increasingly popular within the scientific community and the geographies of its present is being constantly expanded in the nomination cycle of the year we've had 48 countries represented 16 of them have participated in the award for the first time this year the uh, independent jury of the award have given its choice to the scientists from the people's republic of china and we're delighted to welcome them today at the Russian Energy Week. 
Джунлин. Поздравляю вас. I warmly congratulate you all those well-deserved awards. I thank you for many years of hard work, and I wish you a lot of new scientific discoveries. I also would like to congratulate the Global Energy Association and all the experts engaged in this work with the successful completion of a jubileum cycle. I wish you successful work in the future for the benefit of development of science and technologies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Novak. Please stay on to the stage, and I'd like to invite to the stage a dear friend of us, Dr. Rai Kwon Chung, who is the chairman of the International Committee of the Awards. It is an independent committee, as it was rightfully mentioned by Mr. Novak, and each choice is conditioned by purely scientific thoughts. It is comprised by one quarter of Russian citizens and all others are our foreign partners. Yes, please. The floor is yours. Good morning. It is my great pleasure to join this very auspicious occasion of recognizing the best energy scientists in the world. In spite of all the difficulties around the world, the International Award Committee of the Global Energy Prize could have been managed to find the excellent scientists which have been devoting their lifetime to come up with ingenious inventions that could open up new horizons of energy transition for sustainable development and the carbon neutrality for the, of humanity. So uh, at the same time, I also deeply appreciate the excellent organization and efficient management under the Sergei Brilev of the uh, Global Energy Association and also the political support by the Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak for the, our work, uh, accomplishment of the Global Energy Prize so far, that we do be, very much appreciate such a support and the efficient organization of the uh, Global Energy Prize Association. And I'd like to warmly welcome you all to join this very joyous occasion of celebrating two very renowned scientists from China. And I think it is today can be called the uh, birthday of uh, Wang family. We have uh, two Dr. Wang from China, and uh, it is a very interesting uh, coincidence. But I would like to deeply congratulate those two scientists for the, this very uh, uh, auspicious occasion, and I appreciate your attention, and thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much indeed, sir. Great to see it. Well, it is truly wonderful that here in Russia, a citizen of South Korea is welcoming Chinese citizens. Well, this is a true international spirit. And I'm happy to introduce the winner of the award of non-traditional energy. This is Mr. Chun Lin Wan, who received an award. Uh, allow me to read the wording for the invention of nanogenerators as a new technology for the Internet of Things, robototechnics, AI and large-scale collection of blue energy. Please come energy. to the stage. А пока он идет, я вам объясню. Вот мы с вами идем. Вот просто идем. Вот как он сейчас идет. А в это время идет генерация энергии. И она может быть использована сейчас на много чего интересного. Спасибо большое. Спасибо большое. Спасибо Thank you, sir. A little speech, maybe. Dear Prime Minister, Dupin Prime Minister Novak, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank the Global Energy Prize for giving me this prestigious award, which is a great recognition to me and to my team. I'd like to thank many people, especially my family, my team members for many years' work, and this is a great honor. Our invention is the contribution to the carbon neutralization. We know 85 percent of world energy is by fossil energy, but by the end of this century, most of them will be end. So where would be our energy? Once we use fossil energy, where would our energy go? It's just in our environment. So reutilization of such energy become very difficult and challenging. So our invention is to make those unused energy, distribute energy, useful. 
You know that our power come from the electromagnetic generator, which was first invented by Faraday in 1831. What is our discovery? What's the difference? Our discovery make low frequency, low amplitude, make mechanical energy harvesting possible because electromagnetic generator is most efficient for high frequency, high amplitude mechanical tricking. So we do that in contrast. So such an invention was made in 2012, and so now have 16,000 scientists worldwide who are working in this field. What do we use? We use not the coils, the magnets. We use trouble electric effect and the electrostatic induction effect. Such two effects together make energy harvesting possible. Third, what are the applications? The application involve harvesting energy whenever you can, wherever you can. You can harvest from biological system, cell power pacemaker, also you can harvest from walking, talking, as well as wind, as well many other areas. So application involved for environmental protection, medical devices, human machine interfacing, as well as security as a sensor, also as well as for environmental protection as well. Most importantly, we also expand this technology to our global for harvest water wave energy, we call blue energy. So far we'll be able to achieve per cubic meter of water in the ocean, we can harvest 13.6 watt on average power supply. Such power be able to make possible for sustainable development of the, of the humankind. So if we can explore energy from ocean, we have another vast of supply of energy which can substitute the fossil energy in the future. So we anticipate this can be a, not only an energy, but a sensor technology which can benefit the Internet of Things, robotics, as well as smart cities. Then this non-conventional energy prize to me means a lot to me. And you gave me the prize is to recognize my work. Same time, I'd like to tell the community I donate the prize to my um, my home university where I received an undergraduate degree. I'll use this set up another award to have more young people to work in the field of energy and science so that we can have a future. More people like our scientists today, we can make innovation discoveries and contribution to the sustainability of humankind. I thank you for giving me this prestigious award. It means a lot to me and means a lot to my team also hopefully it means a lot to future generations. Thank you. Thank you so much indeed, sir. Uh, the next nomination, Yi Opportunity for the Republic of China, Zhu Juwan. This is yet another winner from the People's Republic of China. Mr. Zhu Juwan, and this is a move in the area of development of the pump. Uh, the floor is yours. of energy application. Who is yours? So, dear Deputy Prime Minister Novak, and uh, Green Energy Association and uh, Global Energy Prize Committee. So it's uh, really my great honor to be awarded for, uh, for this Global Energy Prize. So I graduated in 1990 to got a PhD degree at Shanghai Jordan University. At that time in China, solar energy is on the beginning for the development. So I helped Chinese solar heating companies so to develop solar heating and then I got a demand that need to consider possibility of solar cooling. So then I developed solar adsorption, solar absorption cooling and used for the possible ways to use low temperature sources of heat to drive cooling. And then I had another demand from the solar heating company that said we need heat pump water heaters. 
So then I started researching in the 1990s to develop air source heat pump water heater. So this is a very good complement of solar water heater as if sunshine, we do not ha have intermittent sunshine, then we need this kind of uh, air source heat pump water heaters. Then after some years in the 2000, we had another research possibilities that uh, we need this kind of air source heat pump water heater could be extended for the applications for the building heating. Then we created a new technology to solve the problems of coal based boiler heating in North China. And then it's replaced by this air source heat pump with hydraulic system. That's my innovations. After that, actually it's no stop because we have more requirement for the heat decarbonization. And then I considered whether the waste heat from the industries or ambient heat from atmosphere could be used. Then I developed air source heat pump for steam generation and also large scale waste heat recovery heat pumps for industry heat recovery. So in this case, we create a new technology that in the future for decarbonization heat, we could use our new technology. So uh, air source heat from water heater, uh, space heating, and now we could have steam generation. So this kind of research is no stopping because in China now we have more and more high-speed train and the metro railways. Then they have another call that whether it's possible to generate more high efficiency heating and cooling. Then my research group, we started so-called desiccant coated heat exchanges, this kind of desiccant based heat pump used for the air conditioning or for heating for railway vehicles. And really we got the double COP value, double the energy efficiency. So now we succeeded for the commercialization with another company. So in this case, I could expect in the near future, there are more and more metro lines and also possibly Chinese high-speed train could use our new technologies for desk and heat pump air conditioning technologies. So in this case, what I see is that for the decarbonization, there are always demands that need our innovations. So this is, in this case, what the professors and the students in the university, we need to make collaborations with industries. So with the help of industries and also contribution from my research group, also students, so we did just to show there are really a lot of new ways of energy utilization. So really I'm happy for the global energy price, for the category new ways of energy application. And uh, I think I am very happy to receive this award and uh, I'm sure that in the near future, I need I also my university and also our Chinese people, we need to have more contribution to the world for new ways of energy applications. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you so much, indeed, sir. Нас ждет еще одна награда, но we я должен обязательно поблагодарить it is possible to do what we do today. Mr. Nolan rightfully mentioned that the traditional energy conventional energy sources are still there. More than that, the competition in the conventional energy sources this year is so high that we do not have a winner. And this is a paradox, but that is the case. The competition was incredibly high, and we are moving over this award to the next year, but as the tradition goes, the association is awarding an honorary diploma on its behalf. That is not the decision of the international community, but this is going on our behalf in the area of conventional energy, and today in Moscow with us we have a representative of a brother country, Serbia, 
в этой области. Конкретно это звучит так. Диплом за разработку методологии, позволяющая определить характеристики высоковольтных и сверхвысоковольтных кабельных линий. Доктор Дан Фозиоса. приятно if you want to say a couple of words ladies and gentlemen dear colleagues I am using this unique opportunity to express my gratitude to the Global Energy Association for the recognizing my research achievements and uh, as a globally valuable and deciding to give me this exceptionally high recognition. As a man in a, his late years, I cannot say that this award is for me an incentive for a new scientific results, but I am sure that I will spend the rest of my life much more satisfied. Uh, whenever I look at this uh, diploma, I will, I will remind myself that I have not spent my life wasted. The great Serbian poet Petr Petrovic Njegos about the people who left behind the works of permanent values says, blessed is he who has forever, who lives forever, he has had a reason to be born or in original. Blago onom koje kod oveka živi imao se rašta i roditi. Thank you very much. <laughs>